Hello, my name is Michael Walter, and I'm from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. And today I'm going to be talking about developing multifunctional high performance thiazole thiazole materials for electronic and optical applications. And I have to first uh, thank my amazing research group, who many of these folks here in this picture. Uh, have been working on this, um, some of these materials that I'm going to be presenting today, especially the thiazole the thiazole materials. So I do have to thank them, and I'll acknowledge a few of them as we go through these slides. So in my lab, we work in, um, in three areas, primarily, um, in molecular electronics research. We've been looking at new materials for organic solar cells, um, electrochromic materials and in organic light emitting diodes, so light harvesting, conduction, and light emission. Specifically, we've been looking carefully at hybrid materials with silicon and conductive polymers, um, dyes using uh, the porphyrin um, molecular framework for um, light harvesting photovoltaic materials, and recently, recently we've been studying um, these thiazole thiazole compounds that are very fluorescent and show some unique uh, electrochromic and electrofluorochromic properties. The thiazole thiazole molecule is shown in the center of this slide. It's a highly fluorescent aromatic ring system and in, since 2017 we've published these papers here listed um, using this dye system for a few applications. And today I'm going to talk quite a bit about electrochromic applications of this of this material and also some asymmetric push-pull dye sensor applications. So the synthesis of this thiazole thiazole is fairly straightforward. It's actually just a single reaction. A molecule called dithiooxamid is condensed with two aromatic aldehydes and the condensation goes through an intermediate step which gets oxidized to the fully cyclized bicyclic thiazole thiazole system and fairly good yields. Um, and you can see a picture down at the bottom here of the, the, of the bright yellow compounds that you get, the dye compounds, and their um, high fluorescence under a, U, a UV lamp. Now, uh, a few years ago, we started looking into, um, we're really interested in some of the electrochromic applications, especially materials developed for smart glass. So this is uh, materials that can be, their transmittance can be adjusted depending on um, an electrochemical potential applied between two plates, like two glass plates. And so electrochromic materials can be used to lower solar heat gain so reduced waste energy and reduce um, lighting to increase uh, comfort of the occupants inside the building. So it reduces glare and um, the light that comes through the window and it can be adjusted. So because it's using um, electricity, you can vary the amount of uh, tinting of the windows. So there have been a lot of uh, organic conjugated polymers looked at for these applications. And also a common one is methyl viologen. And you can see the structure of methyl viologen right there. It, um, under a single electron reduction, turns to a dark blue. So we were kind of making our own version of methyl viologen, um, but using the thiazole thiazole core in between the two pyridinium rings. So there's the step how to make this compound at the top there. So we were using it to make a dipyridyl, and then we're alkylating the dipyridyl, and we made a few different derivatives and first reported this back in 2017. And we refer to these as extended viologens because they've got this um, aromatic dye core in between the two pyridinium rings. And when looking at the crystal structure of these compounds, they're very flat planar molecules, um, and that's a little bit different compared to methyl viologen, which has a 36 degree twist as the dication. So our dication is, is much more planar. 
and also these are highly fluorescent. Methyl biogen is not very is not fluorescent, and under um, illumination with a you know UV lamp um, or black light, you can see the high blue fluorescence of these compounds. So that was kind of interesting. So like methyl biologen, these molecules are also uh, electrochromic. So the picture you see there are um, one of the uh, thiazole thiazole bispyridinium molecules um, in a solvent with electrolyte, and it's placed between two conductive glass plates. And when you apply a potential between the two conductive glass plates, it turns to a nice dark blue color. And our thiazole thiazole extended viologen also shows two electrochemical reductions. Um, the reductions are a little closer in spacing compared to methyl viologen. You can see methyl viologen at the top right. There are two distinct reversible electrochemical reductions. Um, ours are a little tighter, at least in organic solvents, the electrochemical reductions are um, pretty close. It does mean that there's communication across the thiazole thiazole pi bridge, um, but to see those reductions, we had to do square wave voltometry to actually tease out both of the, the electrochemical reductions, which you can see in the um, the graph to the um, to the right there. So here you can see um, the spectroelectrochemistry of these compounds in a device and um, the strong absorbance at 400 of the dication is reduced and you see two new absorption peaks out at 600 and 700 and um, this is completely reversible and not only is this color change reversible but the bright um, sort of uh, blue fluorescence that we see is turned off once the dark blue color of the um, quinone structure is formed of the thiazole or thiazole. So we've been working um, a little bit more on this and kind of developing it further and looking at um, aqueous water-soluble electrochromic TTZs. And you can see we've um, just reported this work this past summer. And there are four derivatives here shown. And um, especially the, the two on the right there um, are multiply charged and we're able to dissolve these up in aqueous solutions and in hydrogels. And the reason for this is we decided to look at um, these materials in water because so we developed a device using and you can see it's a very simple device it's just two pieces of uh, and this was also showed good cyclability, a, a pretty good device. Um, we saw good cyclability up to about 200. And just here's a, another picture of the 250. Now we did see some differences among the three derivatives. Um, um, but what was true for all the derivatives? And we also found an interesting aspect since these are dyes and Okay, so for the last few minutes here, I just wanted to switch gears in topography. And uh, we've made a variety of compounds with push and pull. And they show this very interesting sylvatofluorochromism. Whereas you, we actually looked for applications and we've been collaborating with Yamuna Krishnan at the University. So I just want to conclude with talking about um, these highly, and I definitely want to thank those um, um, helping us to